Okay, here we are for another Uncanny Spirits Club video. How are you guys doing? This should be sometime towards the end of March, I think. I should check the dates, I think. I have my videos stacked up way in advance uh, through February and through most of March. Except for the, uh, by the time of this video, I have not done the, um, the St. Patrick's Day themed video yet. But you will have already seen that anyway by the time you see this. So, <laughs> paradox. Um, so here's something that uh, I have gotten before, but I have not done a review of it for you. So I don't recall. I mean, I looked back on my list, but I don't think I did a review. And if I did, well, here's an updated new review. Oops. Um, and this is a uh, this is a nice mid shelf scotch. That I get sometimes, um, either when I'm trying to save a little bit of money and I want something good, or when I just don't want to reach for the super top shelf stuff. I want to have something that's nice and blended. So this is the famous grouse. Make sure everybody gets a good look at the label there. The famous grouse. It's a blended scotch. And this one particularly says up at the top, blender's edition. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. The lighting is not great from the TV there. But um, this is a mildly peated scotch, not very heavily peated because it's a blend. And um, it is 80 proof, so not particularly excessively strong. Um, and it has a little story on the back, actually, about the Blender's Edition. Now, I don't recall if the kind I usually get is the Blender's Edition or not. I haven't paid enough attention. I should probably go back and see if I have pictures of my older bottles and find out because this might be new to me maybe it's, it isn't a completely brand new review um but it says our blenders editions showcase the art of whiskey blending for each edition our master blender selects a unique range of fine malt and grain whiskeys to create blends with distinctive character smoky black which is what this one is smoky black is the only blend in the world, fancy, to use a rare peated version of Glen Turret, which I've never had before, but now I'm intrigued, from Scotland's oldest working distillery. Mm, smooth and sweet with rich smoky notes, smoky black, one of a kind. So there you go. That's the story on the back. Um, I don't think I've had this particular one, actually. I think the kind I've had was their regular introductory Um blended scotch so this is something interesting um now it's not very expensive this is i believe if i'm remembering my prices about 26 or 27.99 for this bottle full-size bottle uh glass bottle not plastic not bad it's a nice mid shelf uh blended tends to be a little bit cheaper than the um single malts but not always you can find some blends that are pretty pricey if that's what you're looking for but this is a good price. I enjoyed the kind that I've had before. And so I am looking forward to seeing if this is different. Uh, it's been a long time since I had the other one, so I might not really know the difference right off the bat. But now this is a screw top, which is not always an indicator of quality. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it isn't. Um, the big difference is if it's in a glass bottle or a plastic bottle. Plastic bottle is a definite pass for me pretty much 99% of the time. Let's take a smell. Smells good. Smells bright. Smells bright and scotchy. So I'm going to go in head and pour in my previously prepared Glen Cairn with a dash of water. And then I'm going to put this to the side. <clears throat> and Let's take a look. Now, again, as I usually say, the color um, on the video is not exactly the same as what I'm seeing in person. But it is a nice, a nice amber color, a nice golden color there. Nice and bronzy. Swirls around the glass really nice, leaves the nice little film there. Uh, let's take another smell of it. Very bright, very bright. It does smell like a scotch. You can, I can smell a couple of different scotch 
forms in there. Like I can smell a little bit of the Highland Scotch that you might get with like McKellen or, or Glenfiddich or something, but I can also smell a little of the peated. There is a bit of smoke in there. So interesting. I, like I said, I, I don't know if this is indicative of the blend I've had before. I don't think so now that I've read the little story on the back, but I could be wrong. I may not have paid enough attention at the time, but let's go ahead and taste this and find out what it's like. Some sour notes. Good sour notes. Oh, good warming. Very warming. And all of a sudden just goes right down into the chest. A good chest warmer. Nice chest warmer. There's not a ton of peat in there, but it is in there. I definitely can taste because after having enough Brooklady and Lafrag and Ardbeg and all that, I'm pretty keen on a good uh, a good peat. And um, you can definitely taste it in there. It has a nice little numbing sen uh, sensation on the tongue as well, which you don't always get with the lower proof. But um, not bad. I'm trying to think if there's any other particular flavors I can pull out of it. It has a little bit of a, um, a like a pear or apple kind of crispness to it in there somewhere. Um, not real heavy, but you can taste it a bit. And that's where I think some of the blend is coming in. Some of the, the Highland scotches are in there. My tongue is still feeling like it's being numbed slightly. Not tingly, like when you get like a Jack Daniels or like a heavy in-your-face kind of Kentucky bourbon. But, um, yeah, I do feel like my tongue is kind of desensitizing just a smidge. <clears throat> Let's take another taste and see if that changes the taste. Only a little. The sourness goes away a little bit, but it is kind of like a sour fruit kind of taste, but not so much apple. More like a pear. More like a pear to me. Um, but there's definitely the, the peated whiskey sensation kind of increases a little bit on the second drink. And that kind of takes over a little bit. So I think as you drain this, it's going to taste more and more like a peated whiskey. Because I think that's what the taste buds in my tongue are latching on to more than anything else. But not bad. Not bad. Um, I think it's uh, it's justified at the price. Um, decent. I feel like maybe it could have been aged just a smidge more. But who knows? I don't know what the individual whiskeys involved were aged at. So might be a moot point. But there you go. There is the famous grouse. I'm going to grab that bottle again and show you the label. <clears throat> it's the famous grouse smoky black blenders edition. All right. And like I said, here in Ohio, in my local area, this was either 26 or 27 99. Um, a good price. Um, whichever one it is, it's under $30. So you can't go wrong with it. It's a nice scotch. Uh, it's in the same category as doers and um and i think there's a johnny walker one of its um i think it's either the red or the introductory black not the double black but um one of those is in the same category so you have a lot of choices on the mid shelf without having to reach for something that's going to break your wallet or break the bank so that's what i got uh, i have a couple things on deck for you for the next few videos uh, I also picked up a bottle of Chattanooga that I haven't had before. And I know I've reviewed one of the Chattanoogas before on the channel. But this is a new kind that I have not had before. And I will probably be doing that for the next video. Um, it'll be the following video from this most likely. If not, then you guys can yell at me for getting your hopes up afterwards. So, um just a reminder, uh, these videos, if you're watching this after the fact, they debut live at 9.30 p.m. every Thursday. Uh, they're all going to be mostly pre-recorded from here on out, with the exception of a couple other ones. I'll probably do the St. Patrick's one live 
just because it's a fun event. Um, but we'll see. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, do what you always do. Do the like, share, subscribe thing. And uh, I will catch you guys next time. So until then...